So yes, I'm Ashley Tesoro. I'm Mrs. Nevada. Um, three years in a row, I was Mrs. Nevada America, Mrs. Nevada International, and now Mrs. Nevada Universe. I will be competing in Mrs. Universe in July at the Westgate on the Strip, so I'm very excited to be with all the beautiful, accomplished women. Just real briefly, yes, my background is in Hollywood, so I started in the entertainment industry when I was about six years old. Um, I did beauty pageants, I did TV shows, movies, I modeled and went to Europe and did a lot of different modeling campaigns. Um, when I was 18 years old, and I, I grew up a Christian, so I was a Hollywood girl, but my family, I come from a line of gospel singers, my great-grandfather was a, a Pentecostal preacher, he would do time revivals with Billy Graham, or Roberts, and I had entertainers in my lineage too, so I have entertainment and ministry, and it's interesting in my life, I've done both. And when I was 18 years old, I was on the soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful, living in Hollywood, California with my family, and a friend invited me to a Bible study, and there I met the man that would be my husband, Pastor Anthony Tesoro. I was 18, he was 23. God spoke to us very quickly that we were the ones for each other, and the love, and the passion, and the attraction we felt in our hearts to serve, to confirm that. And we got married eight months later, and we've been married for 21 years. Yes. And my husband comes from a business background. His father owns um, institutional stock brokerage firms all over the world. And I, we both left our industries of me in Hollywood and in the stock industry at a very young age to follow the call of God and to preach. And we went to college together. We got seven years of ministry training together. We have three children. And then over the years, we've managed to reincorporate entertainment back into what we do. We have a large ministry to the marketplace, and so we do speak in churches, but God often calls us to the people that would never darken the door of a church, but they know that we have secular platforms as well as ministry background, and so they will hear the gospel from us. So God knows how to raise up people with different platforms to send to different corners of the world. And so my husband also works in the movies, and he does. Uh, he's an accomplished martial artist. He does stunt work. I'm now Mrs. Nevada. Uh, I've done other hosting work. And so anyway, that's a little bit of background about us. Um, what's interesting is last night I came across this teaching, being transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as I started looking through the paperwork, I realized that these were my notes and my invitation to, for, to, from 20 years ago when I was invited to speak when I was 20 years old at my very first church in Los Angeles. Then I was going to my closet and I found these shoes that they were the shoes I preached in at my very first service 20 years ago. And I thought, oh, I'm going to wear the blue dress and the shoes are going to match perfect and Lord, I'm going to put these back on. And I cannot believe that that happened. I thought, oh, Lord, there's some reason why you're recounting and recalling to my memory my teaching from 20 years ago, my first church I preached at. I found the shoes, they fell from the top of my closet, I was searching for something, they fell onto the floor, I was asking my sister, come in here and help me, my shoes are falling everywhere, and these little shoes, is what, these are, and I don't even keep shoes that long, but I must have kept these just, you know, as a sentimental thing. You know what, I think I'm going to sing a little something a cappella, um, and then I'm going to go into the teaching, okay? We are standing on holy transformed, 
not the same as they entered, Lord, but different because of your presence, because of the sweet presence of the Holy Spirit, because of the power of Jesus, and because of God our Father. And I thank you for your Holy Trinity, and I thank you for who you are. Transformation comes when we submit and surrender to the Holy Spirit. I said to God, what do I speak about today? He said, tell them about your best friend, the Holy Spirit. My best friend is the Holy Spirit. In John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. When you become born again, when you call upon the name of Jesus, you are put in right standing with God. Your sins are forgiven and washed away. You have a place designated for you in heaven. But your transformation does not end there. That is the beginning of your transformation. Oftentimes we become born again, and we will feel these emotions, and we will feel these, these things come up in us. That is the Holy Spirit within us, stirring us. He's coming to touch us. He's coming to deliver us. He's coming to break us free from the bondages of Satan. There are things in this world, things from our lineage, things that we participate in, things that we witness, that we see, that we go through, that we are victimized. Those things build bondages in our life. We have to be delivered from those things. How are we delivered from those things? By welcoming Jesus into our heart? The Bible says that God sits on the throne, that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, and it is the Holy Spirit who is here on earth. He seals us until the day of redemption. So when you are born again, it's not Jesus entering you, it's his spirit. So it is Jesus in a sense, but it's the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit that gave Jesus power to do miracles after John baptized him. It said that the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus like a dove, and then it was then he went out with the power of the Holy Spirit, and he performed many miracles. We must be empowered by God's Spirit. We must welcome God via his spirit. Why do we sometimes not welcome the Holy Spirit? Because the Bible says that it's the Holy Spirit that not only loves us, comforts us, leads us, guides us, directs, directs us, but it's also the Holy Spirit that convicts us. We need conviction. We need it because it guides us into doing right and to be steered away from doing wrong. God does not condemn us, but he will convict us. And none of us are above God's correction, not one of us. I step out onto the platform before the Lord in fear and trembling, not because I don't think I'm worthy. I know I'm a woman of God. I'm a daughter of the Most High. But because I serve the Master, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, I'm not my own boss. He's my boss. I step out not in arrogance with humility. Lord, use my life to make a difference. Lord, I'm not perfect. I'm only perfected in Christ, and it's a lifelong process. We have never arrived. If you think you have arrived, be careful when you think you stand, that's to fall. <laughs> Communion with the Holy Spirit. Obedience to the Holy Spirit. How does God speak to us? He can speak to us. I've never heard God's awful voice. I know people who said that they have, I have not. But I know when he speaks to my heart. I know when I open his word and something pops off the page. I know when I go to sleep and I have more than just a dream and it's, wow, God, you spoke to me through a dream. I know when a friend comes to me and gives me advice and I think, hmm, you're telling me something. I know when a stranger has come up to me before and spoken something to me and I go, wow, God, that's confirmation. I don't even know if that person's born again, but you spoke through them just like you spoke through the donkey. And hearing God's voice through anybody or any circumstance or situation. Now, I take only wise counsel in my inner circle, so I'm not just going to take anybody's counsel willy-nilly. I'm talking about those moments when you know, oh, God, you've spoken to me. I don't even know that person, and I know that what they said was God. We are spoken to by God's Spirit in that still, small voice within us. We are guided through circumstance. Obedience is worship to God. 
when you obey God, it is the sweetest worship. It is the sweetest worship. When you obey God, our nature changes. We are born with the human flesh. Being born again doesn't change that. It's the process has begun. We are given a free gift to go to heaven. We have the eye and the ear of our Heavenly Father because we've accepted His Son and we're put in right standing. But our transformation comes through that worship to God, through the obedience, through obeying God when He comes to us and He says, do this, don't do that. Obeying. We're not going to do it perfect. We don't hear God's voice 100% perfect. But we can be transformed. You know, as you share this woman of God right here, which I loved, was, loved your message, and I just think you have so much grace and beauty and courage. She said, my husband obeyed himself into that transformation process before God. He literally just said, I will not sin. I will step out of sin. I will walk in Christ. And it's through that that his nature changed. It is in that that our nature changes. If you're not in the right relationship, you're never going to change if you stay in it. If you're doing something wrong, if you don't stop doing it and obey, you're never going to change because you're going to be bound by that demonic spirit. Every sin is connected to something demonic. It's just the way that it is. It doesn't mean that you're demon-filled or that you're a bad, horrible person. But there are, if there are angels and there is God and there is a devil and there is demons and there is deliverance and there is also bondage. But the good, good news is, is that you have the power to choose to be delivered. It is, it is present for you. God's power is active in your life if you receive it. God is not a respecter of persons. He doesn't look at one person and go, mm, I think I'll favor them, love them, and I'll deliver them, but you're not good enough. He says, I have to take the lowliest of the low. Just come to me. Serve me. Obey me. Prayer. The Bible says, pray, pray without ceasing. Praying in the Holy Spirit and filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, praying in English. Communing with God, just centering your heart. Lord, help me, speak to me, show me, deliver me. Water baptism. We should be born again. We should be using our gifts of the, of the Spirit. You know, we should be using these tools, these spiritual tools. You know, fasting, tithing, praying, being baptized, fellowshipping with people that we know are going to uplift us and iron sharpens iron. Being a good person. Do unto others as you, as you would have them do unto you. You reap what you sow. Thank you. <laughs> do things out of obedience to God, not religion, not religiosity. Are you a person of religion? Are you a woman of religion? Or are you a woman of faith? Because if your only move is to follow the A through Z and not to hear God and how to do it, when to do it, and just to be like, I'm doing it, this is what it says, and you're following the letter of the law. We are to be in the spirit of God. It doesn't mean that we throw away God's commandments. It doesn't mean that we do away with those things. It means that we let the Bible be our guide of the right and wrong, truth and error. It is our guide. But we let the Holy Spirit bring it to life in each of our lives. I am a woman preacher, and I'm also a model, and I model bathing suits too. And that might not be right for you, but it's right for me. And I don't judge you, and I hope you don't judge me. Because my calling, although I speak in church, and I've spoken in many churches, my calling is to the marketplace. So those people that are in Hollywood and business and entertainment and look at my Instagram or what I'm doing and go, wow, you're a queen or you modeled a gown or a baby, so that's awesome. And wait, what is this? You love Jesus? And they would never step foot in the church. And it doesn't make one more so better. It's just we are the body of Christ. We are called to do different things. Me wearing a bathing suit and a photo shoot has nothing to do with my purity. No more than it would for you. Purity is in the heart. I married my husband, I was a virgin. I've been true to him for 21 years. But you would be surprised at how many people think, wow, she loves God and she, she belongs to a baby suit company. Like, should she really be preaching? We'll just let God decide that because purity resides in the heart and in your actions. It has nothing to do with 
your industry, if you're whatever you do. Now, there are lines that we don't cross as women of God, but there's also living in the Spirit of God to live out your passion and calling and to use it for God's purposes and to be the individual that you were meant and created to be. I'll just touch on this really quickly, but the baptism, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the evidence of speaking in tongues. So the Bible talks about that in Acts 19, 1 through 6, Acts 2, 1 through 4. I have a ton of tongues, so I'm not going to get too far into it. But speaking in tongues, the Spirit of God prays through us, the perfect will of will of God. When we pray in tongues, our spirit becomes edified or supercharged. I think I believe you are speaking in tongues on the platform. And okay, so that's a perfect example. We war off the attacks of the devil. Our private prayer language from our heart to God, lifts us up. It breaks the power of the devil. We don't always know what to pray in English, so we say, Lord, pray through me, pray through me in the Holy Spirit. We must surrender to God. Through our surrender, he'll bring his healing and deliverance. He'll bring his peace, joy, and prosperity. He'll build the anointing in the kingdom of God in us. The anointing is the power of God. It destroys the devil's kingdom. The devil hates the anointing. As Christian women of God should love it, embrace it. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. If you make confession before God, your sins are forgiven. If you make confession before God, you can enter into his deliverance. We don't become delivered by pretending. And there should be no judgment. And I'm not even an advocate for somebody standing up on the platform and going, oh, I need to share for the whole congregation my sin. I think that can be very demoralizing. But if you have a pastor or a woman that you trust or somebody, a counselor, somebody that you trust and say, I'm struggling. I'm going through this or that. I, I'm not perfect. I'm feeling these things. I'm struggling with this. I have this bondage or this thing. Go to somebody. Confess it. Speak to somebody that you trust, that you know and keep it in confidence that can help you. If it's not a, a Christian pastor or a woman of God or somebody like that, I'm not even, a, I'm all for going to even secular counseling. But secular counselors can help you. Ask God, bring somebody, God, bring somebody. Because if we can have God's presence, we also sometimes we need somebody to help us. We need that human interaction. That's okay. That's okay. That's good. We are supposed to love each other. We are supposed to help each other. We are supposed to do right by each other. God loves you more than you could ever know. Who you are today should be different than who you were five years ago, and who you are five years from now should be different than who you are right now. You should be in ever, in an ever present state of changing, transforming, growing. Remember, I've never arrived. I can be assured of who I am. I can have confidence in who I am. But before the Lord, Lord, my humility is before you, like if I was on my knees before you because at the end of the day, you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and I come before you with fear and trembling. And that humility will take you very far. It will take you very far. So do not deny the power of the Holy Spirit. Do not deny God's presence in your life. Do not push out His voice. Accept it. Accept it. I only have 20 minutes. I can speak on this all day long. But I only have 20 minutes. So I will say this, God's power and his love is so sweet. It is so awesome. It is so powerful. You have to tap into it. Surrender, obey, repent, humility, confession of sin, using your spiritual weapons of warfare. Pressing into God. Don't give up. Keep pressing in. Keep fighting. I am a fighter. I can talk to you all day long about the trials and tribulations and the adversity that I have come up against in my life. And one thing that I don't do, which I think is one of the reasons why God called me, I don't quit. If there's one thing the enemy knows about me, I don't quit. Don't give up. Your breakthrough is right around the corner. You need healing. If you need a new job, if you need financial provision, what you need, God can provide. I want to end on this. I'd like
like to say just a corporate prayer with everybody because that's what we have time for, just to welcome the Holy Spirit. So if you want to just be a moment, just pray after me and just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean with your blood. I welcome the Holy Spirit. Forgive me at times for grieving the Holy Spirit. I pray for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I lay down my flesh. I must decrease that you can increase in me. And the things where I'm not willing to lay it down yet, may you be willing. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Holy Spirit. Empower me, Holy Spirit. I welcome you in my life. And I give you all the glory for what you've done and what you will do. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. I didn't want her to stop. <laughs> Obedience, obedience.